my permit panel meeting, City of Richmond, for uh, August 25th. We have a little bit of an agenda today. Um, uh, on the panel today, uh, we have Milton Chan, who is the Director of Engineering, Peter Russell, who's the Director of Sustainability and District Energy, and I'll be chairing today. I'm John Irving, the General Manager of Engineering and Public Works. Um, on the panel today, we'll be dealing with the issues of uh, form and character for the various applications. Um, uh, we do not deal with land use or density issues. Those are set by council during zoning. Um, our general order of business as we move to each item will be a, uh, we'll receive a presentation from the proponent. Um, uh, we'll also receive some staff comments then I'll open it up to the panel for questions. Um, then we'll have an opportunity to receive public comments. Um, we'll read any letters into the record that we've received on any items. Um, we'll have a panel deliberation and pending a positive uh, support for the staff recommendations, uh, it will be forwarded to council two weeks hence. Uh, so without further ado, um, I think uh, we can move on with our agenda. First of all, we have uh, um, a recommended motion to adopt the minutes from the Melbourne permit, permit panel meeting held on August 11th, 2021. Move. Seconded. All in favor. Carried. Thank you. And then looking to uh, our item number one, development permit 18829233. Uh, do we have the proponent here prepared to present? Ken? Which project is that again? Ken Chow, you're up. Yeah. All right. 0671 Bridgeport Road. Hello, everybody. Ms. Chow, if you could just introduce yourself for the record and, uh, and anyone else you'll have uh, on the presentation with you and uh, happy to have you proceed. My name is Ken Chow, architect at Interface Architecture. Uh, with us, we have the landscape architect, Denitza Dimitrova. And I believe we have the owners, um, at least I see their name on the screen, uh, Forrest. Lamb, and there might be a Carter Mao as well. So if they're here, they can chime in or they can just listen. I can start now. I'm going to share my screen to our presentation. Can you see the screen? I can see it, yeah. I think everybody okay. So this is a 24, this is a feature of our model, a 24 unit townhouse. And on Bridgeport Road, it is um, it's not in the Ontario Road policy, but we're following some of the Ontario Road policy um, guidelines in the Bridgeport sub area. This is another picture of the model. A little bit out of date. The I'm sorry, Mr. Wolf, I think we've lost your presentation. I'm just seeing, uh, I think, your screensaver. I don't know if All right. Oh, well, there. I moved it to another screen for, but uh, you know, here it is again. Right. All right. So this is the if I could, model. If I could uh, suggest um, a full screen mode so we can see better, the control L is the simplest way to do the same. All right. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So well, this model is a little bit out of date. Uh, these trees are replaced with, with shrubs and there's some box windows at the corner and the front. We are going for R RTL4 0.6 FAR, uh, only one variance, the front yard setback. Uh, there's two, two convertible units, no walk-off units. This screen shows some possible scenarios of the surrounding immediate neighborhood. 
So we are center um, interior lots with uh, lots flanking corners. And to the north is a requirement to account for a future public right of passage from this McKessick place that will have passage through our site to Bridge Park. So there's a scenario on the left, a single family and a scenario for multifamily. Um, but it's only a concept. Uh, we have the floor plans for convertible unit. Um, all the units are three stories. Uh, all side-by-side uh, -side parking. Uh, let's go through the, the plans, elevation. And eventually we'll talk about the one, of the one of the issues is how the curving front facade will be constructed and they are it's uh it was a um, architectural device to unify the three floors with uh, the elevation pad floors of windows which were kind of haphazard a bit so the curving facade um, uh, was was an idea that uh, would be an interesting um, architectural element, and it would be furred out uh, six inches to create a change of uh, plane um, and uh, change of material. So, uh, the facade is symmetrical. The project meets the grade at, uh, at uh, the other three sides, as well as the, the front uh, frontage. So it's pretty much self-explanatory. Hardy siding, brick at the front porches and gables. We've tried to give each unit its own identity and have uh, and, um, and have visual interest. And to keep it short, maybe I'll have uh, the needs to come in couple of landscapes. Yes, thank you, Ken. Uh, hello, my name is Denitsa Dimitrova, PMG Landscape Architect. Um, uh, landscape design for this project, um, it's um, showing uh, incorporated existing trees proposed for retention from the arborist. Um, existing grades uh, retain, remain the same, and all construction works are to be uh, installed over the existing grade and under arbor supervision. Uh, each unit have been provided with a private yard with shade tree, uh, open lawn area, and some landscape. Privacy from existing neighboring development uh, have been created with six feet wood fence along north and partially east and west property line and four feet wood fence uh, on top of small retaining wall, uh, which have been provided along east and west property uh, lines partially. Uh, you, uh, yeah, uh, front and backyards have been um, separated with um, fencing and landscape for privacy. Uh, we're proposing here a play area for a younger one. It's uh, located in the middle of the site between building seven and two. Uh, thank you. We're providing there a playhouse and have both, uh, which uh, this play equipment provide different play opportunities like imaginative, um, 
motor skills like balancing, um, even sliding with the bigger hull boat. Uh, also, we're providing um, Tai Chi uh, passive area. At, uh, can you go back on the previous slide? Uh, on yes, thank you. Yes, uh, for exercising and uh, yoga for uh, adult and teenagers even. As well, we're proposing a um, couple of sitting areas. One is uh, located along uh, south east corner at the entry from Bridgeport Road. Yes, thank you. And uh, one a sitting area with uh, two benches uh, at north property line between buildings uh, five and four. Also, we are providing bench, of course, uh, for caregivers uh, at the play area for younger ones as well, nearby mail kiosk. Thank you. Uh, we're uh, we are having uh, we have a um, bike rack for a bike five bike uh, at um, north side of play area. It's on pedestrian connection between Bridgeport and North development um, if you could go back again <laughs> a bit uh, yes it's just yes uh, permeable pavers have been provided uh, for uh, in different colors and texture uh, and pattern for driveway and visitor parking spots and a walkway that uh, south north west connection, a uh, south north connection. Uh, so, this is an overview for landscape, proposed landscape design for this project. And open, I'm open for questions and comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do we have any uh, staff comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. A few comments, if I may. Uh, there is a front yard setback variance associated with this project. Uh, that variance was identified at the rezoning stage and has, in fact, uh, decreased in scale since the uh, project was considered through the rezoning and public hearing process. Uh, the variance itself is driven by road dedication being provided along Bridgeport Road. Uh, we did receive an acoustical report as part of this approval or as part of this application indicating that the building will the buildings will achieve CMHC internal noise standards when you consider both aircraft noise and traffic noise along Bridgeport Road. There is a servicing agreement associated with this development for frontage works along Bridgeport Road and site service connections. The servicing agreement will include the installation of a turning movement restriction island uh, to ensure that access to the site remains right in, right out only. Uh, the There will be uh, right-of-way secured on the subject site for vehicle access east and west should those sites redevelop for townhouse uses in the future. Uh, just uh, like to commend the applicant on their efforts to retain the Douglas fir tree in the southwest corner. Uh, there are also two convertible units proposed as part of the proposal. And just one point of clarification, I believe there was a comment earlier in the applicant's presentation that all the buildings are three-story in height. In fact, the four duplex units at the north end of the property are two stories in height. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Um, okay, we'll go to the panel for uh, any questions. Uh, Mr. Chair, I had a few questions. Um, so I understand, I think I believe I uh, read that the heat pumps to achieve the Interguide 82 rating are on the balconies of the second story. Is that correct? The, the air conditioning system is actually a split system. Right. So the, so the fan call unit is inside, but the condenser units um, are outside. And um, for the um, for the three-story units, they the condenser units are on the second 
floor balcony at the rear. Okay, so I did read that correctly. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so I'm assuming there's appropriate um, sound uh, mitigation in, in that area. And you, you don't have to get into that, but uh, I do know there's an acoustic, acoustical test done. Um, I had a question around um, the playground material on the ground plane. Uh, those, is, it, is it a rubberized? Rubber, yeah. It's rubber, okay. rubber, yeah, place, yeah, in different colors. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I had, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Chan, did you have anything? Um, just one question I might have missed this. Um, just on the sides of the buildings, is there any lighting uh, or anything that would possibly be shining into the, uh, the neighboring properties to the east and the west? Um, I don't think so. There is a, a conceptual lighting plan that was requested and prepared. Um, I, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. No. And then how about for the, 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 the pathway through the center? Is there any lighting provided for that? We have a lighting uh, plan. Uh, uh, we're showing where the bowler lights uh and um mountain uh wall mountain mounted uh lighting it's on l1 in the red uh we're showing the bowler lights proposed bowler lights and on l2 we're showing the symbol of proposed lighting fixed futures so if you could Okay, so there's the baller yeah. lighting in the center building, and then uh, along the pathway, and at the garage doors we have uh, wall-mounted um, lighting future features, and as well at the pedestrian entry uh, and seating area at the southeast corner. Bowler lights. We do have bowler lights there. How about in the, that northern section uh, where it connects to the future pedestrian access? Is there any proposed lighting there? Just can't really see too well on this drawing. Um, at that connection, not, not, no. Just we have a building, a like wall mounted. Uh, okay, so okay. there's wall mounted lights there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. No, no bother lights, yeah. yeah. Um, I just had a question. Maybe if you go back to that colored landscaping plan. Yeah, great, thanks. Um, yeah, I appreciate the uh, retention of the Douglas fir in the south. West corner there, just looking at the north property line. Um, yep. I'm not sure if I missed this. So on the west side, you seem to have additional trees as opposed to the east side. Are those existing trees that are being retained or um, what's the thought there? And is there an opportunity to put more trees on the west side? On the west side, it's a new tree proposed. Um, and we don't have any trees proposed for that east part uh, because it's right away corridor. So um, this was your question or? I... Yeah, so we have a utility corridor underneath the city does? Uh, at, uh, yeah, east of that walkway pedestrian connection. Right, so we, uh, like a like site plan. There's a six meter SRW uh, at the west, so at the east of property line, straddling, and then kind of along the north, and at the middle, it, it zips north again. But only on this side is that, is that um, situation. So, yeah, so that's why we are not proposing any 
trees planted in that west uh, east side of of the backyard, the back area. Okay, maybe that I visited with staff. I'm not, you know, if we could take a closer look at that, I'm not sure that maybe some smaller species would be tolerable in that location. Um, I don't know if that's- a we, have two, we have two small trees, but outside of the corridor, we have two small trees proposed for, um, each unit has some very small trees for building four and three propose just just outside of the right away corridor. Put, put another way, if you can see the location plan at the lower left, there is the blue, which is the SRW. So we are now allowed to plant new trees in that blue right away, sanitary right away. Whereas other trees on the west side are existing. Yes. Right. I appreciate that. Um, right. I'm just thinking perhaps we could revisit that. I'm not sure if that's a sanitary main or um, or what have you under there, or if there is anything, and if that would be intended for retention with development of the adjacent sites in the future. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with panel direction, we're happy to revisit whether there are opportunities to plant within that statutory right of way uh, prior to this advancing to council for consideration should the panel so wish. Great, that would be good, thanks. Um, just another question too on, I uh, appreciate the uh, your presentation on the initial frontage design of of the units and the articulation of um, those, and I, maybe this model in this picture is answering my question, but that's consistent on all the buildings. Right, we've tried to have that motif show up on all the buildings so that the buildings look like they're the same family. Right. Okay. No, I uh, um good. Were there any other further questions in from the panel? Actually, uh, I just had one. I just wanted to clarify um, those middle units. I can see the fencing of the front yards, but it, it, it actually appears to be, from this point of view, almost uh, like an arcade. Like, is it fully covered, that front yard? Or is it, there's actually, um, I don't know if there's a better image to show it, but it, it, it almost looks like it's covered with the balcony fully. Is that is that the case? Not fully, um, not fully, but it's south facing and we needed the, the deck area and the grade area to get our 30 square meters of outdoor area. Okay, so it, it, it's partially covered um, by quite right. private. Okay, that's good, thank you. Thanks. Um, Mr. Clerk, do we have anybody here from the public that's uh, wanted to comment on this item? Uh, none, Mr. Chair. Okay, and do we have any uh, letters or emails to read into the record? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have received one piece of correspondence. Uh, that correspondence is from C. Sun, uh, the resident of 10811 Bridgeport Road, the property immediately to the east of the subject development. In the letter submitted by uh, the property owner, they have raised concerns regarding uh, construction of the proposed development, uh, specifically uh, concerns around the hours of construction permitted, uh, the potential air quality concerns and uh, damage to their property that may have occurred as a result of work undertaken to date and work uh, to be undertaken should the development proceed. 
uh, staff have spoken with the applicant uh, regarding this correspondence and understand that they are committed to reaching out to the property owner and uh, improving uh, the dissemination of information about construction of the site, as well as putting a plan in place uh, regarding any potential property damage. I think the applicant is here and is able to comment further on their intentions to do so. I would appreciate that, yes. Uh, if the applicant's here or... Elite Forest would be online. Hi. Hi, Forest. Hello. So, hi, hi. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, so I want to talk about the uh, what they said we damaged their property. So we will schedule to see the next door neighbor and then we'll address their concerns. And then right now we can't determine the cause of the damages because we didn't do any excavation. We only did demolition. And since it was such a long time ago and no one really told us anything. So I believe it's not our fault, but we'll address these concerns with the neighbor. Okay, I appreciate okay. that. I'm looking for an indication that, that those are going to address is not an issue we're going to um, address here on the panel um, if it's related to damage or construction issues. But uh, as Mr. Craig has noted, um, uh, if the applicant didn't remain engaged with staff on this and through the construction process to ensure that there's uh, there's no further issues or any issues that are created or addressed. Yes, we will. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So panel deliberation, um, I, uh, uh, notwithstanding that, that last piece on the construction impacts, appreciate there's, uh, this is, a, you know, an interesting design with some considerable thought that's gone into it and appreciate the responses in the presentation. Uh, so I'd be happy to support it. I don't know if there's any other comments from the panel. No. Um, so we have staff recommendation. Uh, could I have a mover? Move. Seconded. All in favor? All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, moving on. Uh, um, just give uh, the clerk a few minutes to sort out anything needs to do online with people moving in and out, but. Uh, the second item we have is development permit 19862430 uh, from CSC Interior Services for 8011 Leslie Road. Uh, so when you're ready, whoever's presenting, please introduce yourself and, uh, and proceed with your presentation. Hi, um, hi my yeah. name is Linda Walter. I'm the architect for the project. Um, just before I start showing uh, drawings and all, uh, just let everybody know that this is a renovation project for an existing building. Um, the reason we're at the de development permit is because we're changing the use of the building from office to uh, hotel residential. Um, I'd like to share my screen. I will just go there. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, Linda. But maybe I'll just jump in there. Maybe to clarify, Mr. Craig, this uh, there isn't a residential component to this, is there? Is the hotel itself is residential. It it's by the building by building code. It is considered residential. In, okay. Through the chair, in terms of a zoning use, a hotel is not considered a residential use. It is temporary accommodation. Uh, this application includes a legal agreement restricting the term of occupancy of any uh, guest within the hotel. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify that. Ms. Walter, please proceed. Yes. Trying to figure out how to put this on screen. <laughs> Sorry, I.
Oh, was it for full screen? Here we go. Control L. Yeah, it's not doing. We're just looking at your file list right now. Sorry, I'm trying to show you the site plan. It's on the same piece of paper here. List. Um, let me go to this one. Is that better? See it now? Yes, I can see the site plan. Okay. Um, it's on the left side. That's the existing uh, site plan. What we have uh, is the line that you'll see following around um, is the building projection above. The existing building has parking underneath for the office use. Um, we're filling in some of the parking spaces at this level, a uh, total of six spaces in general, and revising the parking layout to um, accommodate the parking required for the hotel. Uh, because it is uh, temporary residential, the uh, parking limit or the parking requirements are being met. However, we don't have room for the garbage truck to turn around, but uh, we do have a garbage enclosure. I'll just go to the, uh, the next drawing. And um, this is the proposed site plan with uh, one handicap parking in front. Um, the existing uh, enclosure is there. The um, new portion of the interior is here. Uh, one handicap room accessible from the driveway directly at, at level grade and the garbage enclosure here. Um, we do have room for the garbage truck to come in and pick up the truck, uh, pick up the garbage, but apparently their train circle is quite limited. We have columns that are existing. We can't move those, obviously. So um, it has been agreed by the owner that they will bring the bins out um, onto the driveway when pickup happens. Uh, the, the desk, especially at garbage day, and uh, it will be monitored constantly. What we're proposing to do, um, you can see on the right-hand side here is um, that's the face of the building right now. So what we're changing is we're keeping the existing um, existing siding that's on the building. It's located between two um, mechanics shops, if you will, right now, which uh, for a hotel isn't a problem because the hotel will be uh, occupied in the evenings when they are not operating. Um, the exterior of the building will be retained as the siding that is there now. However, the windows, the strip windows are being changed into punched windows um, just to provide more privacy for the rooms. Um, we have uh, minimal landscaping due to the fact that um, the existing uh, parking is eating up <laughs> everything and uh, we are adding in uh, lawn areas and some low planting to complement that um, along with a few small trees at the front of the property. Uh, we do have a right of way um, for engineering purposes on the uh, west side of the property, uh, which is why we can't project anything further into that, into that zone, including the trees. Um, I don't know whether you want to see the floor plans of the interiors or not. I don't think if we're just talking about form and character, we're not changing the character of the building much other than going from strip windows to punched windows. Everything else is staying. There will be a small addition of, a, of an awning over the uh, main entry um, and, a, and a lit sign for the hotel itself.
be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Um, if that's the extent of your presentation, I um, appreciate and understand what you're saying in regards to maybe some minimal changes to the existing, but you don't have any renderings or? Uh, we just have an existing photograph. Uh, we haven't prepared any renderings um, because it, if you take every other window out, that's what you're going to see. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, it's um, it's difficult for us to, uh, and I think the public, this is a public meeting, um, to get a good sense of what you're proposing here. I, you know, again, I appreciate that you're saying it's existing, but you know, when you, you're kind of changing the windows and there's an awning, so there are some changes, but it's very difficult to even understand what the existing building really looks like from a small black and white photo. Looks like you pulled it from street view. Um, so generally, we would be looking for a more substantive presentation and drawings for this kind of uh, this kind of application. Um, but not for the moment. Um, if that is the extent of your presentation, I'll, I'll wait for further questions from the panel. Um, if we can just move to staff comments, if there's any, Mr. Craig. Uh, excuse me. This is Danny Cheng speaking. Hello. Sorry, Mr. Chang. Yes, who are you? Yeah, I'm the, uh, the, Sorry. Yeah, the applicant. I, I, I got some photo, but um, I, I don't know how to make it a computer from, uh, from this one. Can I, can I just show you at, the, at the, uh, my phone? Then you can more understand uh, what was going on. Uh, okay, if you want to attempt to do that, you're, you're appearing sideways to me, so maybe... Ms. Valder, if you could stop sharing. Yes. You might have some opportunity to yeah. see. This one is the, uh, the fun. It's the window. Daniel, yeah, turn it. Turn it, Daniel. Turn it upside down? No. Okay. That's side? the other side. No, now it's upside down. Turn it the other way. The other way? This way? That way. That's it. Now you've got it. Okay. Okay, thank you. So this was the fun area. The window will be, be changed uh, a little bit changed. The, all, all the aluminum, the siding will be painted in the blue color. And the, the landscape will be along, along the side. And the, the side is the, at the back, you can see that at the back, just like that. There's the, this window here, here. So the window will be changed to make it meet the, uh, uh, turn by laws to, to meet the, the room a little bit change. Because you can see the one night window here. So it will be separate in the, uh, the box window. Uh, again, they will be punched windows rather than a strip window. Yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, this one is much better. You can see the back. It's the window here. I will change the window window one by one. Uh, this is the side window, the side at the south, uh, at the east side. It's the low window here because there is the part of the side separate is that belongs to uh, to uh, the that wall there. is uh, right on the property line, and yeah. so there are no openings that are permitted at all. No, so and then the, you can see the. Is the side of the, the facing facing uh, lump of hero, and the the other side is the facing of, of the uh, the other side is facing the um, Elde, uh, Hazel Beach Way. Yeah. It's not a very imposing building. Um, it's only three stories high. Okay, thank you. Let's uh, let's move on then, uh, Mr. Craig. Staff comments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A few comments, if I may. Uh, there are a number of variances associated with this project. Uh, the vast majority of those variances are due to the fact that we are looking at a repurposing of an existing building and existing conditions. Uh, the setback, side yard setback from along the east property line is an existing condition. That is variance number one. 
Uh, variance number two relates to two small car vehicle spaces on the site. Uh, those are uh, located within or between columns that exist below the building. There is no ability to expand the width of those spaces. And given the number, uh, limited number of parking stalls on the site, um, a variance is required. However, as indicated in the applicant's presentation, the overall number of parking stalls provided does meet the city's bylaw. In terms of the on-site loading variance, uh, there is an on-site loading space located on the west side of the building. The space has been reviewed by our city's transportation department and accepted based on the proposed use of the facility. The variance is required as the space does not meet the city's absolute minimum bylaw requirements. However, in this unique circumstance, uh, it will function appropriately. Uh, variance number four relates to landscaping adjacent to or in the rear of the building. Uh, through this application, we are installing landscaping along the east and west property line where those parking stalls are located. So uh, item D is actually an improvement upon the existing conditions. Uh, and there is no setback uh, being provided to the north. Uh, there is an existing uh, service lane on the adjacent commercial development to the north. Um, so we did not feel that a setback or landscaping was warranted in that specific location. Uh, in terms of the hotel use itself, uh, there will be a legal agreement secured as a condition of this application to one, secure or ensure individual hotel rooms are not individually strata titled, that there is no full kitchen added to any of these uh, <coughs> hotel rooms in the future, and to limit the maximum stay of any occupant. Um, there is also a servicing agreement for frontage works and site servicing prior to the building permit issuance. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Um, Mr. Clerk, do we have anybody from the public here to comment or any letters? Nothing, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you. Um, and maybe before we move to questions, and maybe we'll pass on it. You know, uh, unfortunately, I'm just not terribly impressed with the presentation. Um, I can't recall a previous application where we haven't even had simple elevation showing the proposal. We just have a description, a verbal description of some changed windows. Excuse I, me, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do sorry, have elevations sorry, available. I'm sorry, Ms. Walter. Sorry, Ms. Walter, I'm just speaking. Sorry. We'll have an opportunity perhaps later if there's questions. Um, so I think as a minimum for, for uh, the panel and for the public, um, we would wanna see some simple, at least elevations, showing the color being proposed for the building. I understand there's an awning that's supposed to go in, there's landscaping, um, there's changes to the elevations in regards to fenestration. But I, as, as a panel member, I, I can't, I couldn't describe to anybody what exactly those are beyond reiterating the verbal description. Um, so I'm not sure we have enough here to, to move on the recommendation at this point. Um, I would uh, move that uh, we refer this back to the next meeting so that uh, a proper presentation and elevations can be prepared showing exactly what's being proposed. Um, Mr. Craig, I don't know if that's problematic at all or, or any. Uh, through, through the chair, in terms of referral to the next meeting, that would be up to the panel. In terms of elevations, uh, there are existing and proposed elevations in the package agenda package. I'm not sure why the applicant uh, did not provide those as part of the presentation. Okay, well, if you have those available um, and wish to present them, uh, Ms. Walder, I'd be happy to see them. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that opportunity. I will um, pull those up for you.
I, I know if there are elevations. I, I'm just curious if there are rendered elevations that you're going to be showing us, or the uh, they are strictly wireframe. drafted drafted elevations. Uh, okay. They don't really give a very good uh, 3D view, if you will. Um, what you're seeing here on the bottom is here on the left, front on the right, with the projected uh, stepped windows going off to the to the right or to the left. Sorry. I'm sorry, Ms. Walter, we still just have your list up. I'm not seeing any drawings at this point. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, okay. Are you getting questions now? Yes, I can see that. Okay. Um, as I said, the front elevation is this area here. I don't know if the pointer is showing you, um, but there's a, a door and uh, a, a blank wall, if you will, with the three windows that will be replaced by punch windows. The uh, proposed punch windows, the existing, sorry. Wrong one. Is that the A A A P P? So, you know, I'm, I'm just pulling it up. Um, this is this is the proposed scenario where at the front you will get uh, a small sign at the top. One at the bottom. This is the large space on the main floor. Here is where the drive aisle is. So the main presence of the building would be the sign and the canopy located here. The rear of the building would have windows again in, in place of the strip windows that are located currently here. The ones on the bottom here on the main floor are two new residential units um, accessible from the drive aisle from the exterior. Hotel rooms, you mean? Yes, hotel rooms, sorry, my mistake. Okay, so that's the extent of the additional drawings you have? Uh, well, we have the other elevations as well. Um, this is the, the west elevation here, showing the small windows, most of the is strictly a, a, a blank wall because it's right on the property line. And do you have, there's nothing, you're just going to paint the building. There's, I, I see a bit of this canopy, I believe on the elevation. Yes, there's, there's a it? very small canopy just over the door to provide protection um, and, and two very small signs. That's it. The canopy is beige, and I believe the owner wanted to go to a light blue. Could you clarify the material of the siding? It's metal siding. It's existing. Um, all right, oh, let's move to questions uh, for the panel members. Are there any questions of the applicant at this point? Uh, just one more for, th there's the new uh, additions on the ground floor. So what's the cladding going to be on that? Like what, it would match the existing, it would, it, the intent is to match the existing cladding. And, and the awning would be like a cloth awning or metal or? Um, well, it would be cloth over metal frame, aluminum frame. It's, it's not meant to be a structural awning in any way, shape or form. It's more of a hang it off the building type of awning.
mainly intended for weather protection. Okay. Mr. Russell, did you have any questions? Well, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm a bit where you were at before. Um, like if I had to describe to a layperson um, what what is going to what is this what is the appearance of this building going to be, and is it satisfying, or is it uh, good to look at, or is it uh, fit within the context? It's I, I would struggle, so um, I would be supportive of getting more information and higher quality renderings. Um, that ultimately is your decision, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on what I'm looking at, um, like I said, I'm, I'm struggling a bit to understand the project, which is limiting how the questions I would ask. Yeah. Ms. Walter, maybe if you could uh, stop sharing again. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Craig, or uh, process-wise, I, you know, okay, I appreciate it. You know, as an engineer, I can interpret those drawings, but again, uh, as Mr. Russell was indicating, and I think the public would struggle to see this. And, and um, yeah, I don't, you know, if you're going to paint it, um, <laughs> I don't know how we would hold you to task on what the color is when we don't have a color. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to be approving, form and character. Um, well, the form of the building isn't changing, it's what it is now. Yeah. Mr. Craig, um, excuse me. A process whereby we could we could accept this at this point on the condition that the colored renderings are provided consistent with the description, or is that excuse? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chang, asking. Yeah, something. through the, the chair. Mr. Chang, I'm chair. sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chang, oh, Mr. Okay. Chang, sorry, I'm just waiting to hear from Mr. Craig. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, it would be at the panel's discretion to request uh, full color renderings prior to this advancing to council for consideration. Having said that, what I'm hearing from the panel is that they would like to see that information at this uh, forum. Uh, that being the case, the direction would be to refer to a subsequent meeting of the panel. Thank you. I would so move then. Do we have a seconder? Second. Excellent. All those in favor of referral to a subsequent meeting? Uh, through the through the chair, if I may, uh, if the direction could be to refer to the next uh, meeting, uh, that would provide us with the opportunity to uh, advance this to September 15th development permit panel and to circulate the material in advance of that meeting. Sounds good. I think that could be a friendly to the adopted motion, if that's okay for you, Mr. Clerk. Rustigo? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Great. All right, thank you. Let's uh, move on then. Thank you, sir. Uh, are you bear with me? My uh, agenda package is a little slow here. Okay, so item number three we have is uh, development permit 1987 8817. Um, this is 8100, 8120, 8180 Westminster Highway. Do we have a uh, presentation ready to go on this? Mr. Leon? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Wing Leung, uh, architect, I'm making the application that is before you uh, this afternoon. With me is my colleague, uh, Mr. Connie Tam, the project architect, and online also is uh, our architect, uh, Ms. Giselle Smith from ET Architecture. Hello. Hi. The project is on 8100 uh, Westminster Highway. And the site context is that it is very close to the major intersection of number three road and Westminster Highway at the heart of uh, downtown uh, Richmond. So what you see on the screen is a site context uh, aerial photo of our site where Westminster Highway is in front and the, uh, to the right is the uh, number three road. 
Uh, we have a, uh, a quick presentation of a video fly through of our proposal with the model. So we'll try and put this on the screen right now for you. This is a uh, this is our model uh, video of our model shop. So Westminster Highway is in front. We've widened the lane uh, running north south adjacent. And, uh, to the west of us, there's a uh, there's another 16 story mixed use residential building, uh, which our office also did about 12 years ago. The site is surrounded by a series of mixed use uh, high rise apartments as well. So, so very quickly, um, this is the uh, streetscape that we see where we're, two, we're flanked by two residential existing high rise buildings with Buzzwell towards the east uh, of our site as well. Uh, the proposal is for a mixed use with retail on the lower floor uh, with above grade uh, parking garage and uh, proposing market rental housing as well as uh, market for sale uh, condominiums. The lane is widened. Uh, there's a lane dedication for widening up the lane to uh, nine meters from the current six meters. And uh, so on the screen, you see the uh, yellow, which is the, uh, the, the road dedication given for the lane on the west, and also as further road dedication uh, for on the north at Westminster Highway. And our building uh, on the lower on the lower screen that you see on the on the drawing there. Our building is in alignment with both the buildings towards the west of us, the existing 16 story mixed use building, as well as the building to the east of us. So the retail frontage is in street alignment with the rest of the uh, block from number three row to Buzzwell. The commercial is on the lower floor, so maybe big screen you can see the commercial is on the lower floor. And the lower podium floor is clad in a terracotta uh, panel material, whereas the residential high rise is clad in a vertical format uh, colored fiber cement panel with uh, aluminum uh, window wall glazing. It's curtain wall for the uh, commercial retail. The terracotta panel, uh, jumping slightly, the terracotta panel is conceived to be a canvas where we're proposing that could be the backdrop for the future public art uh, proposal on the site. And there is a separate uh, process that we went through with the uh, City of Richmond's uh, Public Art Committee. And the uh, proposal is to invite public artists to participate and have a limited competition for proposal of public art, uh, working with the terracotta panels uh, that we're proposing on the facade of this building. Uh, we move to uh, the materials that we're proposing, the materials panels palette. Uh, on the top left, you see the terracotta panels that we're proposing, and you see the baguettes, which are the long horizontal pieces that you will see on the elevation where the cursor is showing the horizontal lines that you see. So that gives some further depth to the terracotta panels on the lower podium. And the fiber cement, color fiber cement panel in the middle on the top would be the uh, fiber cement panels, the vertical elements that you see accentuating the height of the building aluminum placed uh, in the wall panels. The building is uh, for sustainability that you can see in the uh, various elevations that we have and we'll just flip through those four elevations for you. This is a front on uh, Westminster Highway. 
This is the lane elevation. The, uh, the following one is the rear uh, elevation on the south, then the neighboring uh, elevation to the east. And you will see that in the elevation treatment, that our window to wall ratio is uh, fairly low. It's approximately 46%. And this project will meet the uh, step three code uh, in the uh, sustainability uh, approach for this uh, design of this building. Uh, we are providing 21 adaptable uh, units that meets the uh, basic universal housing standards. There are being, uh, what you see on the screen in blue would be the, uh, the uh, EUH units. And we are proposing 16 affordable rental units, which is this drawing on in blue that you see. And uh, of all the housing that has been proposed on the site, there are a total of 130 units. The uh, family uh, units are approximately 40, it's just slightly over 46%, and that's for the two and three bedroom units. And uh, there are no balcony, exterior balcony lights uh, proposed. Uh, we're mindful of uh, the city's and council's desire for, uh, to uh, control light pollution. And uh, there's a landscape podium on the fifth level and also uh, a little dot one park. So I will uh, turn this over to Giselle for a quick description of the uh, landscape approach. And perhaps I'll just add that on the fifth level podium, there are amenity areas for the residences use in there. And these amenity areas are open and available for all the residents in the building for both the uh, affordable rental housing as well as for the market strata housing. And they, they include a, uh, a function room where you can have uh, little children's uh, uh, birthday parties. There's, meeting rooms and also a uh, indoor fitness uh, facility as well, exercise room. So I'll just turn this over to uh, Josella of ETA. Thank you. Hello, Josella here from ETA Landscape Architecture. So I'll start sharing my screen and show you the landscape component. Okay, can you all see that? Great, okay. So in terms of landscape, the design offers a contemporary oasis for modern on-the-go families. Multi-story planting and a sumptuous, texturally rich materials palette complement the diverse array of active and passive programming. Looking at the north to, um, along Westminster Highway, the sidewalk has been allowed to widen as it heads east towards the busy number three road intersection. The trees and hardscape are per Richmond city standards and chosen to match that of neighboring frontages. The main entry along Westminster Highway features a simple yet refined combination of light colored hard and softscape in the form of basalt pavers, aluminum planters and fern and ornamental um, plantings um, to complement the light colored tower cladding that Wing has discussed and brighten up the north facing entry. At the rear of the building down here, we have um, a gated dog run in the SRW area with artificial turf surfacing surrounded by low septed friendly shade tolerant planting. Um, this is the L5 site plan, um, the fifth floor podium level. So the low neighboring building to the south allows for generous sunlight and vistas. The focal point on the podium is an architecturally inspired custom rubberized play mound with specimen tree, tunnels, and climbing poles. The play area is surrounded by a statement water feature over here to the right. Generous seating and a verdant multi-tiered shrub and tree planting. Trees are strategically placed to provide screening from neighbor, neighboring roads and buildings while allowing plenty of light in during all season. During the spring, light pink cherry petals will create a stunning confetti contrast on the dark pavers. In summer, perennial blooms will fill the space with a warm color palette. There's a dining area, um, accessible urban agriculture down here on the bottom left. Um, 
lushly planted walking loop in the top left, a dog relief area um, by the urban ag, and a vast selection of activities ranging from quiet to communal. Weight considerations dictate that individually planted magnolias on the east side provide a modicum of screening for those units um, while, surrounded, while being surrounded by a green roof. And that's over here on the top right. Um, the multi-story planting plan includes early blooming nectar and edible components to enhance birds and pollinator diversity. Of note, the eighth level contains a significant amount of extensive green roof contributing to amenable views and stormwater retention. And skipping down to the sections. So these are sections to illustrate the amenity area on L5, including the rubberized play mound, walking loop, and urban agriculture area. These precedent images um, indicate the subtle textures and contrast between light and dark provided by the materials palette. And these in images indicate the warm foliage tones and edible fruit proposed uh, for the amenity areas. So to conclude, the placemaking um, that the landscape component provides results in an inviting, experientially and ecologically rich haven within Richmond's core, and we believe families would be happy to call this home. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Chair, thank you. That concludes our presentation. Be happy to answer questions. Oh, great, thank you. That was a question I just asked, but I had myself muted. Um, uh, so I guess we're going to staff comments, Mr. Craig. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A few comments. Uh, there is a servicing agreement associated with this development for improvements to the Westminster Highway frontage, <clears throat> lane widening to the west, and site service connections. In terms of the two variances associated with the project, uh, the setback variance to Westminster Highway is primarily a function of the road dedication being provided from the site. The actual building setback will be consistent with buildings east and west of the subject development. Uh, in terms of the parking variance, uh, the existing CDT1 zone sites do not automatically qualify for the city center parking rates. Uh, that was uh, done to incentivize the provision of low end market rental housing uh, in accordance with the city's affordable housing policy. In this instance, the applicant is providing that affordable housing, 16 affordable housing units in total. As such, we are recommending application of the city center parking rates to the subject development. Uh, if I can, just a couple more questions uh, or comments, I should say. Uh, the project has been designed to achieve the city's uh, aircraft noise standards and city CMHC interior noise standards. Uh, the project will be district energy utility and built to energy step code three. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Craig. I'll open that up to the panel then for any questions. Um, a couple from me, uh, just one, um, there's on the south side, there's that dog area. Uh, what's the other hatched area? Because it looks like the dog run is just the central portion there. And then there's the other one just open for pedestrians or what is it? That is a, um, that is part of an SRW. Uh, however, to the south of us on the property line, there is an existing fence uh, with mature trees. So that's an area where there's an SRW for service. So our building uh, does not encroach into this SRW area. So the idea in here is that that is an additional area on the southeast there that would facilitate uh, easier car movement if required. But uh, it's paved. down here, yes. Yeah. So and then and these are all paved areas that could you know, facilitate uh, car movement. But the little dog run area 
that you see in the green in there is really is open to the sky. So we have lots of light in there. And it's a little area where additional dot run can be so that it activates that area so that it is uh, visible and at the same time uh, there is a use for it so that uh, it prevents for uh, ordering and setup issues. So this area will be closed off to the public. It'll be for use of the residents only. Uh, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> Just while we're on, maybe I'll add on, um, Mr. Lung, if you, you mentioned the SEPTED, if you could just describe some of the features there. It's open. It's open to the sky. There's a there's a aluminum fence that is along the south property line here. Along that, so is gated, complete completely gated in the evening when the garage gate is closed off uh, from the lane when the commercial uh, businesses are closed. During the daytime is visible and it provides, when there's an active use around there with cars coming in and out, it provides uh, surveillance. Uh, and so instead of leaving it as a, uh, leftover area when you, when what we're suggesting is if it could be uh, finished off this way with the paving and the landscaping, then it would encourage use. And when there's use, then uh, there are eyes on the street that you will. Okay, and so there's no gated ground level access to the south or the west? Uh, not to the south, not to the east, there's no uh, but to the west, there is a there's a access from the parking coming in. Oh, I see. Yeah. And to add to the septed point from the landscape perspective, all of the planting is very low. It's mostly shade tolerant ferns and low ground cover, which prevents people from hiding behind any tall shrubs or bushes. Yeah, we just don't want people hiding. We don't want people hiding things in their eye. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chan, did you have anything further? Um, it's just one question on, on the podium level with the play areas. Um, maybe I missed this one, but what, what sorts of, um, of play equipment is there just for what sort of age groups uh, is it really suited for? Yes, so we have um, the tall architectural rubberized play mound um, that's in the bottom right corner, and that's suited for uh, age five to 12, so older children. Um, it has tunnels to crawl, crawl through and it has um, climbing poles embedded in the top um, and a tree in the very uh, center top of it. And then for the younger kids, we have a playhouse and uh, climbing slash uh, seating stumps to the north of that. Thank you. No further questions for me. So I just, yeah, I just had a few, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, this is a, a, the, the right uh, image to see. Um, I, I don't know if it's a, I know there's no requirement per se, but I don't know if it's a metric you, you monitor, but would you be able to uh, um, tell me what the percent canopy coverage is for this planting scheme at, at, at uh, full maturity? Is that a metric that you're aware of? So that you, that you uh, just, just to reiterate your, your question, um, the canopy coverage of all the trees at full maturity? Yes. Um, I don't believe we have that calculation on hand right now, but we could probably get something to you later uh, if necessary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, maybe through staff, I'm, I'm, I, I don't need to receive it. I'm, I'm just looking at... Uh, Essentially, um, with the combination of the green roof, there's there's quite a bit, and um, I think that does go a long way for a heat island effect as well as uh, storm stormwater management as we redevelop these sites. So, um, I did have in terms of the terracotta and the front elevation. So I, I'm just trying to understand the vision for the public art. So um, there's quite an extensive amount of information in the package around public art, and it's clear that'll be uh, tendered at some point. 
um, but it wouldn't necessarily be covering uh, substantial areas of that of the tiling. Is is that the vision? Um, my hope is that it doesn't cover all of the terracotta. Because the architect would still like to seize on terracotta. The idea is that this is a uh, potential canvas that um, they can use as a backdrop uh, for public art. Um, personally, I think that <clears throat> Excuse me, we go to the rendering. I think the northwest corner uh, in here would be a really good place where the public art uh, um, would be can be placed. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a, it's a corner where you can see from the intersection of number three row and this Westminster Highway. So you stand at that intersection and look. Southeast is a highly visible uh, setting for putting a public art. And so um, if you look at um, the public art that we installed on the building at number three and uh, Westminster Highway, the uh, perpetual sunset, and then uh, you look at the potential of this one, and then the other building that we finished at uh, Cooney and Westminster Highway. It would be a series of three fairly interesting, but potentially very diverse uh, public art piece. And that was the uh, suggestions that I had at the public art uh, committee, which appeared to be uh, quite well received. So that's my hope that that corner would be a setting for the public art and that the rest of the terracotta together with the baguette um, detailing on the terracotta the stand on the zone. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect that the if the budget um, well, that's in the in the report is uh, the actual budget. I wouldn't expect you'd be able to do a lot of um, cover the tile with that kind of budget. But um, yeah, that's it. I had I have no other questions, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks. Just actually just looking at what you have up here now, um, the street trees, are those existing and are we not planting anymore? It seems a little sparse. Those are proposed street trees and um, they are chosen to match um, existing street trees uh, that are in the offsite a little bit to the east. Okay, and is there not an opportunity to put in more than three? Through the chair, uh, the species uh, to be planted along uh, the Westminster Highway frontage and the spacing will be determined through the city servicing agreement in consultation with Parks and Engineer. It is not part of this uh, proposal in terms of what will be planted. Okay. We will be looking for opportunities to maximize the planting to the greatest extent possible. Great, thank you. Um, and then I guess uh, conveniently, yeah, looking at your um, northeast exposure in the top right corner there, um, the low rise has that wall on the east side that's presenting itself in closer proximity to the property to the east. Could you just maybe, if I don't know if you have something more detailed of that elevation and, and describe um, how you're mitigating potential impacts to that neighbor. Uh, we'll show an elevation that is, so I've seen such a So this is the uh, elevation that you see, and these are the uh, textured uh, fiber cement panel that is visible to the neighbor. We are a fair distance away from here, and you can see the limited number of windows that we have there so that the overlook is minimized. So these are the sections uh, showing the adjacencies between our, uh, our podium and their podium. So if you go back to the elevation, then you'll see that is uh, generally uh, three floors. That is uh, 
about their claim on the other side. So the dark gray, the darker gray that you see on the elevation uh, would be the close up. Okay, got so your elevation wasn't isn't showing you've got trees in front of that as well? Yes. So the landscape trees are, as you can see on the landscape plan, there are three trees uh, on I guess the right uh, of that where you see right now. So if we go back there. So there are three trees there. These are lower planters. And then there are lower planters, the, the step planters are in front. So Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, and then just one other question. The so appreciate the amenities you're presenting here. These are going to be equally accessible to the affordable and rental units for everyone in the building. Right. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's all I have. Does uh, were there any other questions from the panel? No. Nope. 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 Mr. Clerk, do we have anybody uh, from the public here or any letters? Um, Mr. Chair, we have no members of the public uh, registered to delegate for this item, and we have, we have received no correspondence as well. Okay, thank you. Panel deliberation, well, um, want to beat up on the previous applicant, but uh, I think this obviously sets the standard of what we're looking for in terms of um, the high quality presentation that really makes it easy for the panel and the public to uh, understand what's being proposed here. Um, and uh, I believe for the site, filling in here um, would be a nice addition. It seems like an awful lot of thought and consideration has gone into this design. Um, appreciate the elements um, such as the dog run and uh, the use of that space that otherwise uh, might just be a back alley. Um, so yeah, a very nice project. I'd be happy to support it. If the panel has any other comments. I, I would echo your comments, Mr. Chair. The uh, it, it in, I, I quite like the massing. Um, it's, it is a dense site. Um, so I think that is done well. And the um, landscaping and amenity space, I think will be uh, used by the owners. Okay. So we have staff recommendation. Do I have uh, a mover? So moved. moved. Second. Great, all in favor? Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Leon. Good luck with the project. Thank you, thank you panel. And uh, I'd like to thank planning for their support and helping us to they're a great team, really. So moving on, uh, we have our last item today, item four, development variance 21934707 uh, from Maybog Farms. Um, so we have Todd here, uh, if you're ready to go. <laughs> you bet, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair and panel members. Uh, you guys can hear me okay? Yeah, good head nods. And uh, also we have available uh, Mr. Uh, David Melnichuk, who is our agrologist. Um, and his agrologist report forms part of your uh, package. But uh, certainly if there's some questions that I uh, can't handle, then uh, we'll certainly call on Dave and uh, he can help us out. So um, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, as you understand, uh, we are before uh, the panel requesting a uh, variance, um, so increasing the allowable size of impervious floor. Um, we are hoping to build a, um, a fresh fruit, um, like a larger barn where we can pack fresh fruit, fresh cranberries. Um, and in order to do that, to accommodate our needs, uh, we need to vary the amount of uh, concrete floor or impervious floor uh, that we're allowed to do. So um, as, as I said, I'm a, uh, a cranberry farmer, uh, fifth generation in the city here. Um, and uh, we've farmed for quite some time. Uh, we're focused primarily on cranberries uh, and we are members of the Ocean Spray Cooperative. Uh, so there's a number of uh, cranberry farmers in the city here 
um, and we uh, all belong to a cooperative. Uh, it's a marketing cooperative. So fruit is grown individually and then, uh, you know, processed and brought to market to consumers um, uh, as a group. So um, the reason for this new uh, barn is the fact that we are looking to provide uh, more fresh fruit to the cooperative. Uh, it's been a long-term project. Um, the, close to going on a decade now that we've been working on this. So there's a number of changes in the fields, in the cultural practices, the way we grow cranberries, uh, harvest and handle them uh, to be able to get them to get fresh fruit. So it's the exact same berry, um, but the vast majority of the fruit goes to further processing. So it'll be frozen, it'll be turned into juices or sweet and dried cranberries. But when we handle fresh fruit, uh, it needs to be handled very, very carefully and delicately and, and very specifically. Um, and in order to access sort of local communities and markets, uh, it's something that requires a fair bit of effort and investment. Um, and, and those facilities don't exist um, in, in Canada or in Western Canada. Um, and currently fruit from BC here uh, is going down to the United States uh, and Ocean Spray is working with a third party um, to, um, to, to bring that fruit back into the Canadian market. So um, I see we just started sharing the screen and I think that we're going to put up a, um, a picture here of potentially, um, Stephen, if you're able to put up attachment one, that would be very helpful uh, of the agenda package, but we can certainly work with this one too, uh, whatever works for you. So um, what we can do is, uh, talk a little bit um, uh, about the facility uh, and its location. So why do we need a little bit um, bigger footprint and where did we choose to put it? Um, you can see here now is a picture of the facility. Uh, it's a, uh, a big square barn. It, it sort of encompasses three quarters of, of the square. Um, and the last quadrant that doesn't form part of the building is a concrete loading apron. So fruit that's being brought in from the fields uh, would be transloaded there, be brought into the facility, be uh, dried, cleaned, cooled, sorted, uh, and prepared to get to market. Um, and, and one of the, the challenges we have is the fact that in handling this fruit, uh, we need to handle it quickly um, because of the, the ripeness and the harvest window, but the time in which it is shared with consumers is a much longer time. So this is a bit of a buffering process. Um, if it's possible to pull up the site um, location, so it, that would be the aerial photograph. Um, Stephen, I think if you're scrolling through the package, it might be okay. So we don't have that, but that's okay. Um, let's just work with this here. Um, if, if you'd like to follow along with a color picture or if you like, uh, gosh, I apologize. I thought this was gonna be on screen here, but no problem. This is attachment one from your package. It's just an aerial uh, photograph. And uh, it's the same as the picture that is being shared on screen. You can see that the placement uh, for the proposed barn is immediately adjacent uh, to our existing barn. Um, and it, it does a couple of things that allows us to share our existing driveways and road networks that we have within the fields. Um, so we're eliminating the need for duplicating a lot of those things. Uh, and then we're using the same existing access. So our our road that we, um, when we access the, the community, uh, when we get to our farm uh, via number eight road, which is a city public road, uh, we again get to use the same access and, and not duplicate things. Um, the other thing that attachment one might show you uh, in the aerial uh, view is a little bit of coloration in the field. And what you would see is the placement of the barn. Not only is it uh, fairly close and compact to our existing one, uh, but it's very light in color. And that's denoting soils that are like highly clay based. Uh, it's the, the least productive part of the farm. So it's going to have the least. Ah, there we go. Excellent. I really appreciate that. Um, you can see some of the coloration there. And uh, you can see that the outline in red of the proposed barn area um, ends up uh, not only is it adjacent to our existing farm, uh, but is 
an area that is very good for building uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, geophysical, but uh, in it, it's going to have the least impact on the total farm because that's some of the areas that are the least productive in terms of uh, the total field. Uh, and, and obviously that's just one field there that you see. Um, and, and we, our operation has many fields. Um, the reason for this uh, facility, as I said, is some of the, um, the harvesting requirements and needs but it's also about providing a high quality product that has good food safety and good traceability uh, and fits into really modern agriculture. Uh, gone are the days of um, you know, picking things directly from the field and, and putting them on a roadside stand. Uh, if we want to be able to share um, products that, and, and fresh is really a marquee product for for cranberry producers, it's it's always has good recognition with consumers because it's traditionally consumed around certain holidays and times. Uh, but it also bridges that recognition with other products such as juices and sweet and dried cranberries, where the vast majority of of uh, cranberries actually go in terms of getting to consumers. But um, what we have is the opportunity to share this fresh product in a state of the art, you know, very technologically advanced way that is traceable, is safe, and is of the highest quality, um, and, and still do it close to the farm where it's it's very um, efficient. Uh, and in this instance, where we're kind of farming in the middle of the city, uh, it's certainly close to, to the consumers as well. So um, I would draw your, so now that we have this uh, map up here, I would draw your attention to um, just one little addition, uh, and that is um, access. So if you look closely along number eight road, and number eight road in this map is uh, vertical. So it sort of bisects uh, the map and um, in highlighted in red. So immediately adjacent uh, to number eight road on the, it would be on the west side of number eight road, but it is the east side of our existing properties where there's a couple other barns. Uh, is a uh, emergency vehicle right away. Uh, so uh, part of the conditions for this um, proposed variance is that we would provide um, access in favor of the city uh, for emergency vehicles and traffic. Uh, and uh, we work with staff to, to prepare that and are fairly committed to doing that. Um, I, I think that that sort of encompasses uh, what we're proposing here in terms of uh, requesting a variance for for uh, increased um, uh, impermeable floors, and we've shared a little bit of the reasons why we're doing that. Uh, we certainly are excited about the project. It's kind of neat. I said I think I told you I'm a fifth generation, but uh, already the kids are involved, uh, and it's kind of neat to say that you know the sixth generation is is excited about agriculture, and it's kind of a neat opportunity to to uh, to continue to support excuse me, support viability. So um, with that, I would uh, thank you for your time and I'd be happy to answer any questions or provide any feedback if you'd like. That's fine, thanks for your presentation, Todd. Uh, we'll just move to staff comments, Mr. Gray. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, just a couple comments. Uh, this proposal was reviewed and endorsed by the city's Food Security and Agricultural Advisory Committee earlier this year. The associated uh, soil fill application was also endorsed by Richmond City Council on July 26th of this year. Uh, prior to this application proceeding to Council for consideration, should it be endorsed by the panel today, uh, we would require confirmation of the soil fill permit application approval from the Agricultural Land Commission. Nothing further. Uh, okay, panel questions. Maybe I'll just start off and Mr. Craig, just to clarify this really, I mean, the reason this is before the panel, this is just a variance on the coverage. So we're not actually looking at the building itself. That, that is correct. Right. Fairly straightforward. So we're here to assure that the concrete is flat and <laughs> that's about it, I guess. Um, so with that clarification, any questions from the panel? Uh, Mr. Chair, I just said, you know, it's it's 
uh, not germane to the actual scope of what we're doing here, but I'm curious about the location and why why I leave some uh, land adjacent to the east uh, maybe neutralized. Yeah, if I may, through the chair, Mr. Russell, thank you for the question. Um, placement of the, the building is aligned with the existing barn um, and it facilitates, um, so um, depending on which, which sort of map you have there, but if you look at the uh, aerial photograph as an example, there is an additional line. And so that is a proposed cranberry berm all the way around. Um, and in addition, that perimeter dike, so it's going to continue to be farmed all the way around, um, is required for harvest uh, so that we can, uh, there's a requirement for heart. So let me back up. Um, there's an RMA Im immediately adjacent to number eight road. So if we back out of that RMA and it, it doesn't apply to agricultural activities, but we wanted to be uh, respectful of, of those considerations. And then we put in the two required um, dikes for the growing of the fields. And in addition, the access for the building, which will be over the cranberry dikes. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to put that building immediately adjacent or, or further east to the property because what happens then is um i apologize i'm just show you with my hands if we have good adjacent i apologize but good adjacencies and alignment it's much more efficient for the flow of of equipment coming in or trucks is what they are but they're farm trucks in the fields coming in getting around the building uh and then delivering product and if you start to stagger that you get to huge driveways all over the place so we felt this was the most efficient placement given the farm activities um, without sort of ramming it right up east against the eight road right away. Does that? Yeah, that, thank you. That's, that helps you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Right, any other questions? Uh, just, just one question for me. Uh, just in the minutes from the Food Safety and Agriculture Advisory Committee, I noted that there was some discussion on the size of the facility. Just wondering if you just encapsulate that. I understand it's supported, but I was just curious how you decide on that particular size versus something bigger or smaller. Yeah, through the chair, uh, Mr. Chan, thank you for the question. Um, so the size is determined um, based on projected volumes. So um, in terms of fresh, we're going to handle about 10. Um, Apologize, we talk in hundred weights, which are barrels, about 10,000 barrels is a million pounds um, with opportunity for growth. Uh, fresh is uh, certainly in high demand here in, in Western Canada. Um, and so there's opportunity to grow. And so this facility here has been sized to uh, not only reflect what we do now, but future potential. So it encompasses the, the fresh equipment and cleaning, and then some of the storage, like the buffering that I spoke about, where we're trying to extend the season, not only around harvest right now in the September, October timeframe, but when we can start to move it out to December, or there's even some demand uh, in January and February as well. Okay, thanks. Okay, and if there's nothing further, uh, Mr. Clerk, do we have any public comments uh, or anybody from the public here to speak to this? Uh, none, Mr. Chair, and we have no correspondence as well. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move to panel deliberation then. Yeah, I mean, this is fairly straightforward. Obviously, it has council support, so uh, um, I don't know if there's much for us to do here other <laughs> than support this as well. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you very much, panel members. And uh, if I can just add, it's it's been a pleasure. Uh, I, I've appreciated working with staff. They're certainly very committed to agriculture. And uh, again, here, uh, we appreciate your endorsement, but um, staff have been terrific in supporting us. So right. thank you very much. Have a great day. No, we'll look forward to some accompaniment to uh, Christmas turkey. Look supplied locally. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, so getting back to my agenda here. <clears throat> oh, 
apologies again for my slow computer. Uh, I don't believe we have any new business. Um, and then the date of the next meeting, I guess we will have with the referred item and anything else that comes up, Mr. Craig. So that'll be September 15th, 2021. Uh, and with that, could I have a motion to adjourn? Please. Right. We're adjourned. Thank you very much.